Hey, great friends. It's Friday afternoon, everybody. Glad you guys are here. Uh, want to start off today a little different than I normally do. I want to start off today saying that on Friday, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, this weekend we're out looking for a new house. We want to go visit open houses. We want to see what's out there. And if that's going to be the case, I would encourage you to call Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. You can use the QR code Alex just posted on the screen, 858-376-1299. Because I think a lot of people right now are kind of coming to a realization that prices aren't coming down. Rates are probably coming down. They've already started to move a little bit. Gary talks more about that. He's the expert. But prices are not. And so if you buy in now, and your rates come down later, and then all of a sudden you're not paying as much, you're going to be in a better spot. Look, I'm no expert in real estate, okay? But Gary is. And I would say this, if you're interested in buying, if you would like to talk to an expert, if you want to hear about loan programs where you don't have to have a lot of money to put down, talk to Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Given that today is Friday, I also want to mention to you these guys over my left shoulder, Tory Holistics, or my right shoulder, or my left shoulder, Tory Holistics. Um, all you have to do is this. When you go to Tory Holistics or California Holistics, use our promo code BETTERBUD. It will save you 20%. So you walk in, you say, hey, I've got this promo code. I'm a Kaplan and Crew listener reviewer, and it's BETTERBUD. They give you 20% savings. Now, what Charlie has come up with is this. The next time you go in, they're going to have your name in their system. You're going to get 30% off. And the third time you go in, you're going to get 35% off. And then, by the way, the fourth time you go in, you're probably going to go back to Better Bud or whatever the new promo code is at the time, and you're going to get 20% off. What a deal, man. What an amazing deal. So going into the shop is great, but if you want to use it for home delivery, that's fine too. That's super easy as well. So um, when you go on to ToriHolistics.com and you go to check out, you put in that promo code Better Bud, you're saving 20%. On any purchase, $75 or more. And by the way, Oxnard Holistics is on the way. So stick around for that. Hey, and one other uh, mention here before we get going is our friends at Prize Picks. You know, today's Flex Friday. And I keep looking at this and I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I really am. I'm trying to figure out they've got Patrick Mahomes at 0.5 yards passing. And that's a gift, right? That's that's a freebie. That's just a gift. I'm looking at Travis Kelsey at 69 and a half yards receiving. Travis Kelsey is going to have more than 69 and a half yards, believe me. Um, Patrick Mahomes and, and Travis Kelsey, they got a game plan and Travis Kelsey has to be one of the biggest stars on this stage. And, you know, he got to show off for his girlfriend. So I'm just looking at some of these plays, Christian McCaffrey, 90 and a half yards, Brock Purdy, 242 and a half yards passing. I've not made a play yet on the big game, but with the big game now being a week away with basketball season on fire, I'm going to talk a lot about that coming up. You take a basketball guy and a football guy, you put them together and you play a combo in the specials league. And now all of a sudden you're elevating your opportunities to win even more. And I'll tell you this, if you've not yet made your first deposit, you can do it super easy from your phone with Apple Pay and they match your first deposit 100% up to $100. So before the big game and with basketball going nuts, get in on prize picks, join me and over 7 million other people who are playing the game, prizepicks.com slash great friends, prizepicks.com slash great friends. Use that QR code. It'll take you right there. All right, let's get started on a Friday. Hey, great friends, you know what today is. Come on, Browner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Friday. Shabbat Shalom, baby. It's Friday. Yeah. Friday afternoon, Kaplan and crew. Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. You're looking for something fun to do this weekend. A little blackjack, a little poker, great brunch at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, parking's easy. It's free. No smoking. Great location, seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. Do I have to say anything else to sell you on this? Come on, man. Seven Mile Casino. Espresso martinis? Sevenmilecasino.com. That's right. That's right. Oh, all right. That's right. Espresso, baby. Uh, okay, fellas, it's Friday afternoon. Now, Browner, let me start with you. Oh. Mm. You know, yesterday, like a bunch of honestly, like, like I can't believe it. We canceled the comedy show last night. 
at the Grand Comedy Club because it's raining like a mofo. And we're like, we can't, we can't expect people to come out in this rain. We, we sold a very nice number of tickets. We already had a lot of great reservations, but you know, you got to rely on walk-ups and walk-ups are going to double the crowd, but nobody's going to come out in the rain. It's too cold. It's too red, too wet. It's too dangerous. I'm telling you right now, by like 4.30 yesterday afternoon, sun was shining and it was a beautiful day. What the hell, man? Now, I guess maybe the good news is, is that we've moved the comedy show now. And now it'll be a Saturday night. It'll be two shows. So we'll have a bigger crowd. It'll be a lot of fun. But man, I, I was so bummed out yesterday that we canceled this thing when it turned out to be a beautiful afternoon and evening. It was rough. It was rough, <laughs> man. I'm not going to lie. This is one of those things where you just go, man, these weather forecasts look terrible. What do you mean five days in a row of rain? And then you start, and it actually starts coming down early in the morning. And so you go, well, they got it right. And, you know, last time was so bad. Yeah. We can't have a repeat of that. And we don't want people out on the road coming to see us. And, you know, then we get word that that's one somebody who bought a ticket had an accident. And, you know, then it turned into a whole different I think that's what it was, man. I think it was the previous storm a week ago that just, you know what? Yeah. Better safe than sorry. Of course. Browner's gonna it Browner's Browner's funny February first. Browner's f- funny March second. You know. What yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And then it just and then the sun came out because this is my daughter's birthday too. So then the sun came out because I had I got all this stuff to do indoors. <laughs> I <had> to do <laughs> it right. <laughs> and then the sun comes out, and she's like, "We should go outside." I'm like, "Eh, I don't know." It's going to rain. It's wet out there. It's your birthday. You're wearing a crown and a star. You should stay inside and stay dry. <laughs> it was just the worst. It was the worst. It yeah. was the worst. Thanks to, for nothing, weather. Thanks for yeah. nothing. I know. And it's funny because for me, I had a meeting last evening with a longtime great friend. And uh, and this guy, I, I had mentioned him to you a couple of weeks ago, not by name. But I said that I had a friend of mine who I thought was actually really legitimately mad at me because he receives our Friday emails. And in one of the Friday emails, we had posted a new merch drop, which was the Spanos Hater t-shirts. And I received an email back from this friend of mine going, bro, would you grow up already? Like there's nowhere near the anger about the chargers that there once was. Like maybe you should grow up and get over it already, you know? And and, um, we hadn't spoken in a long time. And I was very upset about this. I'm like, this is a close friend of mine. Like he can't really, really be this mad at me. So I had this meeting scheduled with him last night. So he and I met, we had a couple of beers. He never brought it up. Thank goodness. I was like, I'm, I'm acting like it didn't never even happen. Um, and then I left to go over to my girlfriend's place. Cause I wanted to take her out to dinner. And you know what she said to me, Browner? She was, thank God you're not asking me to go see Browner and Lawhead tonight. She goes, but whatever. <laughs> I, I, she's like, I don't want to go. It's too cold. It's too wet. So truth <laughs> be told, even though the rain had subsided, like it, when it's cold and it's wet and it's rainy like that, People don't want to go. So March yeah. 2nd, Grand Comedy Club, Escondido, we'll be there. We'll reset the whole we thing. We want man. people in the mood to laugh. Last night, the conditions, the energy, that's not a laughing mood. It's just not. It's just people are cold. They're wet. You know, it's just not. It's just not. It's just yeah. not. Yeah. So, hey, look, it's Friday, and uh, we're just getting going. And I, I got to tell you guys, um, I was driving early this morning, And I turned on um, Adam Shine on Mad Dog Sports Radio. Do you guys know who Adam Shine is? I do not. You don't. You don't know who he is, Browner. Um, No. He's kind of like I would. Glasses, right? Yeah, I would describe Adam Shine as like uh, the younger version of Chris Russo. You know, grew up as a WFAN Mike and the Mad Dog listener, and he's kind of got a similar act. You know, Uh, I like him a lot, actually. I, I think Adam Shine's really good on the radio. So I'm listening to Adam Shine this morning, and he has a caller call the show. And here's what this guy says. I'm a 60-year-old San Diegan, and I disavowed, I gave up on, I threw them away, I burned my jerseys. When the Chargers moved out of San Diego, I was done with them. Done. Their Mm -hmm. failure over all these years, I celebrated that failure. And then he said this, but guess what? Now that they hired Harbaugh, I'm back, baby. No. And, and, he, and, and you know what he yeah, said? Yeah, baby. And he, and he used this phrase, which I thought was really interesting. 
He said, all is now forgiven. Here's really? a guy. Yeah, here's a guy calls a national radio show to say that that he hated the Chargers. When the Chargers moved out of his hometown, he grew up 10, 11 years old. Him and his buddies were at the Murph. I mean, these were the words he's using. We grew mm -hmm. up in that stadium. Mm -hmm. He goes, but you know what? All is now forgiven because, according to this guy, Jim Harbaugh, who played for the Chargers, who should have, and by the way, they were horrendous when Jim Harbaugh played for the Chargers. Mm -hmm. If Jim Harbaugh comes back to the Chargers and expresses this love and adoration and admiration for the Spanos family. If if Jim Harbaugh feels that way, and he played for him, he he got paid by them. If he feels that way about them, now this guy on the uh, this caller on the radio goes, now I feel this way about him. all. What was that caller's name? Forgiven. I don't remember. I don't know. John, Dean, oh Spanos, mm. Michael. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling Here's you, man. I I heard this call and I'm like, wow, man. Now I will say this. Jim Harbaugh's press conference yesterday, entertaining, not surprising. Oh, and doing the rounds today. Yeah. Very, very scheduled rounds. You know, What's he doing? all the all the 9 a.m. shows Colin. this morning. He yeah, was oh, on of course. He was on, Colin. he was on Colin. He mm -hmm. was on McAfee doing the rounds, man. Oh, really? I have that's one yet. thing. That is one thing right there. Right there immediately. Immediately. The benefit of hiring Jim Harbaugh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those three shows want to talk to you. Yeah. Are right. asking nobody, to talk to you. Right. Right. Nobody, nobody cared know. to talk about Brandon Staley. Nobody was but curious Aaron, about Brandon Staley. You know what I mean? He can handle the conversation. He has character. He's got personality. And he's got a history that people can go back to. He's got a brother. Like, he's a story. Brandon yeah. Staley wasn't a story except for being I mean, an abject failure. That was I mean, it. He's a different S word. Oh. He's a star. Yeah. Yes. He's a star, yes. dude. Right. Jim he Harbaugh is a star. absolute football yes. star. That's right. College, NFL, player, anything you want to say. Jim Harbaugh is a top tier football star. Totally right. Chargers on. got him. Totally right on. And and it's like I said the other day, I told you guys the story on Saturday. I was out at the Farmers Insurance Open. I ran into a close friend of mine who's also like much, much closer to Dean Spanos. And he said to me, he goes, uh, hey, I watched you on TV. And I was really impressed that you gave the Spanoses their due for hiring Harbaugh. I go, dude, in my wildest dreams, I would never have believed that the Chargers would pay a coach $15, $16 million a year to coach the team. I would never have believed that. Yeah. So now that they've done it, you know what they've really bought more than anything else? They bought yeah. credibility. They bought credibility in the world of football. People now believe the Chargers are a top-level team because they have a top-level coach. They bought credibility to a fan base or trying to grow a fan base. They bought credibility to the corporate buyers of Los right. Angeles, people who buy suites, people who buy expensive tickets, people who buy ad packages. They bought credibility. They bought it in the locker room. And in many ways, I think that this caller who I heard today they bought credibility to fans that had given up on them. Now, look, I'll ask this question to everybody. If you're like me and you gave up on the Chargers years ago because they moved out of San Diego, and it wasn't just that they moved, it was how they moved. Does Jim Harbaugh make you a Charger fan now again? Mm -hmm. Because because it doesn't for me. But what I will say is this. Just when, when the Chargers left over the last seven, eight years, I've watched every game for the most part. I've, I've celebrated the way things have gone. I, I celebrated when they didn't make the playoffs when they lost to the Raiders a couple of years ago. I celebrated when they got smoked by the Raiders this past year. Um, I celebrated when the Jacksonville Jaguars came back and beat them when they were up 27 nothing at halftime in the postseason. I mean, I actually had more fun as a fan watching them fall apart. But I'm a Harbaugh fan. Doesn't mean I want to see the Chargers win a Super Bowl. That I, the, the last thing I want in my life is to watch the Spanos hold the Lombardi I mean, trophy. When Brandon Staley was the coach and he was fumbling all over himself, getting crushed by the Raiders on Thursday Night Football, uh, we didn't have the chance to come on the show the next day and be like, man, I hope they don't fire him because they did fire him right away. But right. you did say, I don't want the Chargers to fire Brandon Staley. Right. I wanted him to get a contract extension. You wanted the extension. I need right. to continue. This is too entertaining. Right. You're going to have to find a way to... I don't know if it's the hate is still going to be able to come out if they're out there winning 12, 13 games a year. 
I don't know, man, but I, I know this. I'm a Harbaugh fan, and, and you said it. He's a star. And even just yesterday his press conference, we'll play some of yeah. it for you. You got to, you got to, you know, hear the things he says and just, he is a star. Okay. So Alex has posted a poll on our website, kaplanandcrew.com. I wonder if you have a QR code for that also so that people, cause it's easy. I mean, you can just go to our I website. Kapl- All right. Yes. Kap- kaplanandcrew.com is the, is the website for those of you that are watching on TV or watching on uh, YouTube. If you just use your phone and you click the QR code, it'll take you right there, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so now here's the question that we posted. It reads like this. Now that Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Chargers, are you a fan? And the answers are no, never with the Spanos family. No, they can never get me back. Three is I never left. And four is yes, I left and now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I put two no's was because in theory, one day the Spanos family may not own them and that may still not get you back. They may have lost people forever, which is why I put the second option. They can never get me back. You know, I'm, I've, um, I'm lost forever. And it's, it's really just because I've just moved on. You know, if you were a kid who grew up in San Diego and you were a a lifelong hardcore fan and you left the, the bandwagon, but now Harbaugh might bring you back. That's possible. It is absolutely possible. But I'm, I like me in my, sport fan life. I've just moved on. Cause like now I'm a Patriots fan. You know, I was a Browns fan a year ago and for the last four years. Why is and that? There he is. My man. There he is. My man, Alex Van Pell, AVP in the house yesterday took the offensive coordinator job with the new England Patriots. And by the way, later in the show, I'll tell you a lot more about this because what happened to Tampa, what well, to Vegas, Vegas, well, um, Cliff Kingsbury happened to Vegas, I guess. I don't think so. I, I think that I, I'll, I'll tell you guys what I know later on, because, okay. um, you know, yesterday morning at five, I mentioned this on the show yesterday, yeah. but yesterday at 5 AM, I was getting text. you know, Hey, I'm in, I'm in new England. I'm meeting with these guys for the second time. And then last night it was probably eight o'clock or so. I got, you know, the full download of everything that happened during the day mm-hmm. and how Tampa and how Vegas were still very much involved. Um, but you know, it's hard to say no to Bob Kraft. I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, I do want to, we'll go back to that, but I don't want to, I want to bring this up because when we were off on Wednesday, mm-hmm. the contract details, not details, but the contract terms of Jim Harbaugh were released okay. by multiple sources. Okay. Now I don't know and what those were. I don't know what you're me neither. Tell us, but I will tell you this, that when I saw Dino's friend at the farmers, he said that he, he had heard 15 million a year for five years. Gotcha. Close. Okay. According to numerous sources, mm-hmm. five years, 80 million, which is 16 million per. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. I mean, which again, makes him the second highest head, highest paid coach in the NFL behind Sean Payne. Mm-hmm. No more Belichick, no more Pete Carroll. So, yeah. Well, I mean, look, the, I think that if you're the chargers, one thing you could say to Harbaugh, if, if Harbaugh said, look, no, it's really important to me that I'm the highest paid guy. Hey, Hey Jim, look, man, they're the Walmart family over there. Okay. They got it. We don't, we ain't got yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're going to be scraping this thing together here to make 16 million work. Yeah. You know? We're going to be getting How much? You want to be, you wanna be coaching offense, defense, and special teams? Yeah. We'll <laughs> give it to you. Yeah. No, we can give you that, but you're going to, your coaches are going to come from high school. So, right. Yeah. Your assistants. Uh, did you guys, did you guys watch any of the press conference yesterday? Some, a little bit. So I watched all of it. I don't know why. But I watched all of it this morning because he's Harbaugh because he's a star. No, I, no? I don't know. I no. I put think it this I way. Let me put it this way. You ready? Yeah. If Jim Harbaugh mm-hmm. was the coach of the Washington Commanders, mm-hmm. I can honestly tell you, I, I see. I'll see a couple of highlights on Sports Center. Yeah. When you put together Harbaugh and his star with the Chargers now in L.A. Mm-hmm. and the history that we all have with the Chargers being from San Diego, yeah, I mean it makes. To me, I, mean, I don't know if the whole country's watching it, mm-hmm. you know, but Southern California, I think, probably was in large part sports fans. Although, State of Michigan, State wrong, of Michigan might. Yeah. Although, listen, he got trumped. Uh, the whole story yesterday got trumped by LeBron and AD not playing. And then the Lakers beating the Celtics last night um, in terms of like, you know, the sports page. In fact, I haven't even looked hey, at the got Trump. Hey, let me, let me, I know what you, this is what I want people to know about that loss last night. Because oh, the NBA product, Lakers, Celtics. Yeah, we're gonna get yeah. To it. 
the the product is bad. The NBA product is bad, and that's the number one feature of it. The Celtics shot way too many threes. Way too many. But that's their game. If the threes don't go in, you don't win. That's modern-day NBA. If the threes don't go in, you don't win. And that's what happens. So kudos to the reserves. Yeah. That was like Johnny Cochran. They just like Johnny released Johnny Cochran right there. They, they released the Kraken. Okay. <clears throat> Austin Reeves, baby. Okay. They're the same guy who's going to be like, oh, fire this person tomorrow when they lose again. So cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. back to Harbaugh. So there were a lot of sound bites that came from this press conference. And by the way, I'm going to take a quick time out here and say to everybody that this segment, since we're talking a lot of football, being brought to us by our friends at Prize Picks, PrizePicks.com slash great friends. Browner, have you looked at all today at uh, at what's going on on Friday? Have you looked at, at the uh, at what's going on on Prize Picks? Not yet, because I got I'm I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for next week to start really cooking. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. Keep, this, keep my powder. Keep my powder. Keep my units dry. This um this whole Patrick Mahomes thing is still they're giving you this gift of half a yard passing, and so um. Patrick Mahomes, half a yard, and then I got to put it together. And listen, if you take – because there's only one football game left. The big game is now a week and change away. If you take a football guy like Mahomes at .5 yards passing and you combine with – I'm just making it up – LeBron James for five three-pointers made and the number is six and a half. I mean, dude, you you can combine football guys and basketball guys in the specials combo section, and now you're elevating the opportunity to win. So get on to prize picks, prizepicks.com slash great friends, prizepicks.com slash great friends. For everybody watching on TV and watching on YouTube, hit this QR code right here to my right side and um, make that first deposit using Apple Pay on your phone to make it that much easier than ever before. But the combo of football with only one game to go, the big game, and basketball, as crazy as things are right now in basketball, put it together for a combo play in the special section, dude. You got a chance to win serious coin. I'll tell you that right now. So yeah. let me know what you think. <clears throat> anyway, where was I? I was back to Jim Harbaugh, wasn't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just right. I just asked if you guys watched it because I did find it funny. He did kept um, – there's two names that I think people have heard on this, uh, the great friends have heard of, but Ed McGuire and then mm-hmm. there's a Fred. Who's Fred? I've is heard this. The, is this the bald guy that was standing next to him? Uh, mm-hmm. Because there was, I saw a picture. There was Dean Spanos, and then yeah. I, I thought I saw John Spanos, and then there was a guy, um, with Fred Mass, maybe. Uh, Fred Mass, I mean, Fred has become like he went from He's he was going to staff now, yeah, he was going to save the day and keep mm-hmm. the Chargers in San Diego. And now, is that what the deal? You know, if you show me the picture, and I looked at him, I went, I think that guy looks kind of familiar. It could be Fred Mass. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't even know what picture you're referencing, to be honest, or else I would pull it up. But I was just I was bringing it up because I found it hilarious that Jim kept looking over in his press conference because, you know, they have this new facility coming out, mm-hmm. but it's not open yet. And he's like, yeah, you know, we need to order stuff. We need to buy things. We need to maximize what we don't have. And I was just like, is he already telling them how cheap they are? Like, is he <laughs> well, <laughs> or am I reading way too much into it? Because, you know, how like. He pauses a lot. He thinks about what he's going to say. And he would go over and be like, right, Ed? Yeah. Right, Fred? And I was like, are you already calling them out? (laughs) I mean, dude, this is, he he knows. Listen, Jim is going to do what Jim has to do. When you're being paid $16 million a year, you're going to say all the right things. You're going to tell everybody how great the Spanoses are. You're going to tell everybody they believe in the same things I do, faith, family, and football. Faith, family, and football is like the most, I mean, you're going to hear that from him over and over and over again. Oh, the bald uh, guy's a new GM, by the way. The oh, oh, is that about. is that is that the guy um, from Baltimore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's him. That's him. That's right. Yeah, yep, yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna hear that phrase, faith, family, and football. It's gonna make you nauseous at some point. You're gonna like hear it over. But listen, Harbaugh's a star, and there's no doubt about it. And and he, like you said, McAfee, Eisen, Coward, all the rounds today because everybody wants him and everybody wants to hear from him. So guess what? We're going to hear from Jim Harbaugh. That's coming up next. This is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends. It's Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. 
Um, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but in a matter of moments, we are going to play some of the press conference from yesterday as Jim Harbaugh was introduced by the Chargers. It's hard enough to believe that Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Chargers, but what I was really going to say is, and guess what? You're going to hear from Dean Spanos. That's right. We're going to air some of Dean Spanos's commentary at the press conference right here on this show. It really does make me wonder what people will say when it comes to the poll question we put out today. Are you now back on the Charger bandwagon now that Harbaugh has taken over as head coach? People would ask me all the time, what if your son was good enough to play for the Chargers and your son was a kicker for the Chargers? Would you be a fan then? I'm like, well, that that would be that would be a real a real conflict, of course. Um, no, what it? if? Yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean, I have no choice, right? What if what if your best buddy became the head coach of the Chargers? Would you would you then would you then go back to the Chargers? Well, that's that's another one of those kinds of conflicts. But I love Jim Harbaugh, but he ain't my best friend. I'm just a fan. Mm -hmm. So if you if you could put that back up on the screen for just one second, Alex. Um, now that Jim Harbaugh is the coach of the Chargers, are you a fan? Question A, no, never with the Spanos family. Question B, or answer B, no, they can never get me back. C, I never left. And D, yes, I left and now I'm back. You can go onto our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and you can uh, also click the QR code. Browder, how are you going to answer that question? Bro, that ain't even a question for me. Y'all already know what it is for me. I've been in the house. I'm Never the one left. checking out these at the door. What he left mean? for a little bit. He left for a little bit. The boy, the Bears on? No, with this with Brandon Staley. You were you were out. You were done. That there. You were. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He lost me at the end. Like yeah. lost me, lost me. Yeah. Alex, how, how, you, you you decided last year to be the the person who was going to be unemotional about the Chargers. You mm -hmm. weren't going to be a hater. You weren't going to mm -hmm. be a lover. You were mm -hmm. going to be down the middle, Padilla. Yeah. So, so how objective, objective observer? Objective observer, the double O. So how how are you yeah. feeling now? I find that to be a very healthy way to live life when it pertains to the Chargers. You know, I find that very healthy for me uh, to not have to root for a team that is always going to break your heart, and then to not have to hate a team that it just feels like a uh, vindictive sort of sort of uh, feeling. Uh, so this year was actually quite refreshing, and I will continue to be that way. And right now, as the objective observer, Scott, mm -hmm. I am concerned for the haters <laughs> <laughs> at this moment. But we'll see. I, I, I did say I did say I believe them that the day after they fired Brand Staley, I hope they do hire a legitimate coach because that way we'll see how strong the Spanos curse is. There is mm. no more excuse. They got the coach. They got the quarterback. They're in L.A. They're wearing the powder blues. And that's what pisses the haters off. And I think that's something we failed to neglect, Scott. Dean Spanos would never do this in San Diego. He never listened to the fans in San Diego. He never, ever, ever went back to the Powder Blues when that's all they wanted here in San Diego. He never spent money in San Diego, which is why haters are pissed off in San Diego. He never did the things that he's now forced to do in Los Angeles. And that's what pisses people off. So if you're a hater and you're still staying strong, I understand. And I do want to talk to those people specifically because there is legitimate reason to still hate that man. It's not necessarily that the logo or the color. It's that man. They hate him because they he didn't do anything when he was here except try and leave when he was here. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've said this a million times. Like, I'm over the whole thing. I just find it fun now. Now, as a sports mm -hmm. fan, it's fun. You know, um, it's it's fun to root for somebody. It's fun to root against somebody. Yeah. You know? Um, I wonder if, if uh, they'll go 14-2 and two and then they'll – fire each other or they'll fire him because they don't see eye to eye anymore well listen let me tell you something um going 14 and 2 or in this case now 14 and 3 or 15 and 2 uh not an easy task and um you know jim harbaugh talked yesterday at the press conference about not wanting to win a super bowl he wants to win multiple super bowls oh well, hmm. isn't that what is that what everybody's gonna say I mean, isn't I mean, that's, it, that's what I, mean, I say you, about the Vikings? I mean, I don't yeah, want I mean, Kevin O'Connell to win one. I want to win a lot. Yeah. I mean, do, do you become the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks and go to your press conference and go, you know, my goal is to actually finish about like 500 ish. What's you your know? reality? What's your see? Mm -hmm. The goal is one thing to talk about at a press conference. What's the reality? Yeah. If, one, if you're taking over and retire, this, it, right. If you're taking over the <laughs> Seahawks, the reality more than likely is that you're not going to win a Super Bowl. If you're where, who's your quarterback with Geno Smith? Where 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 is the? But let's be. Let's talk about Jim Harbaugh's reality. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Jim Harbaugh. Like let's. he he talks about the Lombardi Trophy, the empty pot, the empty portion in his cabinet is the Lombardi Trophy. It's not the same as a national championship. You mean to tell me if Jim Harbaugh wins a Super Bowl in year three, 
You can't see Jim Harbaugh walk away? I can. Not with two years. Nah, nah. Back to back. His brother got one. His brother got one. You need two. In a family, you need two. Yeah, but he's got the national championship, too. Yeah, don't, he just said it ain't the same. You know, he probably no, got laughed away. He got, he got, I'm saying, he you got, got the trope. The table with that trope. You got the Lombardi and the that national thing championship. Got here. Dude, that's mm. golden. No, nah, fam. Getting ahead of myself. Because I don't All know right, well, they're going to win one. Let, let's start off with Dean Spanos. So, look. Do we I, have I said, to? Well, I, I'm, I have no problem with it. I Listen, man. Sometimes you got to give credit where credit is due. And I can just say this. I never in my wildest dreams and knowing the history of the family and knowing the man himself, I never, ever, ever would have thought that they would spend the money to get Jim Harbaugh. Um, I was on a Jim Rome show earlier today. For those of you that are listening on 1090, JT the Brick was filling in for Jim Rome. And JT said, why would Dean Spanos go against everything he's ever done? And I said, it's really very simple. It's called desperation. When you find yourself in a desperate situation, you ask yourself, am I doing things the same? Or how could I make things different? Mm -hmm. And if you were going to hire a Mike Vrabel, that would have been different than what you've done because he would have had a, you know, a head coaching experience. But if you were going to go hire like uh, uh, this kid, what's the kid's name? Callahan, who just got hired by the Tennessee Titans. You know, which, by the way, that's kind of a cool story. You know, you become a head coach and you hire your dad as your offensive line coach. And oh, by the way, I'm so happy. Reverse I, nepotism? I, or I is that still nepotism? I, I think it's well, it's probably it's probably reverse nepotism. But I, I tell you this, I can't wait to I can't wait to watch the Cleveland Browns fall flat on their face. I can't wait to root against Deshaun Watson because now everybody's left. The entire offensive staff of the Browns. I can't wait left. to not talk about the Browns anymore. Well, dude, me too. Now get ready to talk about the Patriots, Jack. Nope. That's fine. Because they're oh, going to draft like Drake May. They're going to draft Caleb Williams. They're, they might be actually entertaining. Well, if they don't get those to the top two guys, they go down to the third guy, the guy from LSU, the guy who won the Heisman Trophy. What's mm -hmm. it? Jalen Jaden Daniels. Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Dude, they, you get that guy. Uh, yeah, go get Joe Flacco. He's cool. AVP knows how to bring it out of him. You want to know? Well, I'll, I'll tell you guys what, what he told me uh, last night about how the Patriots front office – and the ownership was like, don't give up on Mac Jones quite yet. And Bye. Explain, well, yeah, but, Bye. but, but Browner, I'm going to tell you something from the inside. I'm going to tell you how they feel on the inside, um, which you and I look at it from the outside. He's not very good, right? That's how we look at it. I don't think he's very good, but they have a different perspective on the inside. I'll explain it to you a little bit later on. Gosh, I probably shouldn't even say this stuff on the air. I just think it's, I think it's funny. They got the third pick. Yeah. Third or fourth. So yeah. And they're going to take a quarterback. I'm sure of it. Right. It, it, and that's it. Then that's it. Like uh, what they think in there, if they don't take a quarterback, if Jaden Daniels is available at four and he will, because the Cardinals have the third pick and they need a tackle or they need a wide receiver. Now, unless they trade out, if the if the Patriots are sitting there with a brand new offensive coordinator and a brand new head coach, and the number four pick is sitting there and Jaden Daniels is available and they don't take him, people are going to be pissed around oh, they, New England. And they should be. And they should be. I mean, because that kid as a Heisman Trophy winner, I mean, I barely saw the guy play college football. But man, the numbers that that kid put up, I mean, he's to me, I, Heisman Trophy winner, kind of a little under the radar. All right, back to Harbaugh for a second, though. Back to Harbaugh. Let's go to Spanos and hear what Spanos had to say as he as he he speaks at the press conference first. Let's let's hear what Dean Spanos had to say. When I was talking with Jim this past Tuesday, as he sat on the tarmac in Michigan, his flight out here was delayed because of snow. I told him how appropriate it was that his press conference was scheduled for today. He asked, "Why is that?" I said, "You're bringing the storm with you. It's supposed to rain all day Thursday." There was a brief pause, and he replied, "Dean." We are the storm. Coach, well said. Thank you. Jim, let me be the first to officially welcome you to Los Angeles, to the Chargers, Sarah, your entire family. I can just tell you from myself, my family, the organization, the entire community, how, how grateful we are you're here and how excited we are you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Um, do uh, I have to say yeah. it? Do Is I have there, to say it? Yes. Do I? Yes. I will say this. Let me say this before you say that. <laughs> As the, you don't need a paper to do what he just did. 
if that story's real and authentic and funny, you don't need to read it off a paper. Like the second half of what he was saying, Jim, how he was looking at him, we're happy you're here, we're excited. That was real. That felt real. That felt like a human. The, oh, the storm is coming. Like, what? We are the storm. Before, before Scott what? says, well, he has to say, I have to ask a question. I could be wrong. and I'm going to come off as a hater, but I'm not. I'm just asking a question. question. When was the last time an owner thanked a coach for letting him hire him? For taking my money. Thank you for letting me give you $16 million a year. I'm grateful that you're here. Mm-hmm. I've never, in my opinion, I don't remember ever hearing an owner thank someone they just hired and being grateful that they accepted the job. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not even, I don't even have to say anything. I mean, Browner's, I mean, but you have Browner to say said, it. no, Browner said it. I mean, you like you're incapable of just standing up there going, hey, everybody, thanks so much for coming. Uh, really exciting day here in, in the history of our organization. Uh, this is a guy who comes from a football family. Dad was a coach. We all know brother's a coach. Believe it or not, his son is even a coach. I mean, this guy is football his entire life. He lives, breathes, eats, I mean, sleeps it. This guy is all football all the time. You know about his national championship. You know how great he was in San Francisco. And I'll tell you something. Um, this is a new day for our organization. We have decided to go in a different direction. And rather than hire a first-time head coach and give that person a shot, we've decided to go get the very, very, very best guy available in this cycle. And we're happy as hell to have him here. Jim, he looks over. Coach, hey, we're, we're looking forward to some exciting times. You know, my family's owned this team for for however many years it's been. We went to one Super Bowl, okay? Um, you know how much of a struggle it was for us. You, you played for our team when, unfortunately, we weren't very good. Wish we were a lot better. We're going to be better with you as a coach than we were as you as a quarterback. And we're just happy as hell that you're here, man. And uh, and without, with that, here's our new head coach, Jim Harbaugh. I mean, is, is it really, really that hard? Man, man. Two minutes. That was two minutes, bro. Two minutes. Do not take a paper up there. By the way, I'm doing you guys a favor, and I only put Spanos on the content. I didn't I only put Dean in the content because John went on this seven-minute, like, it was enlightening to talk to all these coaches, and we had to d- dig deep, and we had to, I was like, bro, no, you didn't. You got Jim Harbaugh in your office, and you hired the guy. Mm-hmm. Like, you That's wasted it. your time with everybody else. What are all you going right. to tell me that you took from Brian Callahan that you're going to tell Jim to do? You know what I mean? Like, what are you was- going to – what are you going to take from Mike Rooney. McDonald and tell Jim Harbaugh to do? Come on, man. Get out of you, here. You, you Rooney ruled the thing. You the, interviewed the a bunch of people so because you had to. <laughs> and so Atlanta will say the same thing. Washington's going to say the same thing. We talked to a ton of candidates. That's because you have to now, bro. Or they'll find you. But All right, let's, again, let's, let's hear from why Harbaugh. do you – <laughs> the paper just infuriates me, dude. That you don't, you don't. It's so inauthentic. Get him a teleprompter for crying out loud. I, oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Looking down, looking up to tell a story of humor. What uh, says the comedian? Yeah, right. Like, come on, man. Yeah, come on. All right, right. let's start off with some. Uh, obviously, you're in LA. There's only one. Ma- like, That's your the owner, hacksaw. Bar. That's your owner. Mm-hmm. It don't mean I'm proud. All right. The, you can't uh, choose your the- parents. The Hacksaw of Los Angeles, no disrespect, but that's just who gets the first question in San Diego? Hacksaw. Who gets the first question in Los Angeles for any sport? Jim Hill. They had a mutual moment, 11 seconds of admiration. Coach, this is uh, I'm Jim Hill of KKL 9 News. Congratulations. You're a legend. You're a legend. No, 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 no. You're the legend. You're a legend. No, 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 no. You're the legend. legend. Believe me, you're the legend. (laughs) I still trip out. Jim Hill was in the original Rocky, and he looks exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I see Jim Hill at all these Laker games and I, I always make sure I go up and say hello and, you know, kiss the ring, dude. I don't know what he does to his hair, but it's, but it is, at, it is just fascinating. He looks the same. Um, mm. Mm, mm. I don't know about that. I wouldn't give him this dog. Dude, let me uh, tell you something. Same, that man. ain't the same. No, yeah. that Bro, ain't the same. Rocky was in, when, when was Rocky? When was that shot? I don't know. 80s. Yeah, Not in know. the 80s. Get the F out of here in the 80s, yeah. dude. That 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 ain't the same, bro. What are you dude. doing? I'll tell you what. He's 76. He looks the same. He's a good dude, man. He really is. I I uh, 
I always remind him, you know, Billy Ray and I, one year we went up to a Laker game and we were sitting in the media room and they were doing like some bro down old school football bro talk, man. And he played for the Green Bay Packers and boy, he got some stories and he ain't bashful to share them. And uh, <laughs> I can't repeat them. I tell you that right now. All right. Keep going with Harbaugh. Right. Let's hear. So, Harbaugh. yeah, uh, let's start off with the serious stuff and then we'll get into the things that went made went viral yesterday. Here he is talking about expectations now that he's a Chargers head coach. Los Angeles, Southern California, uh, they respect talent, effort, and winning. And, um, and it needs to be multiple, multiple championships. Uh, and that's, we're going to be hum, humble and hungry, uh, but, you know, that's our goal. That's our goal is to, um, you know, treat people in a first-class manner, to win multiple championships, uh, and Day by day, you know, now I'm quoting Jackie Harbaugh now. I mean, going to be one day at a time, one game at a time, one play at a time. Yep, that's dad. There he is. That's dad. That's right. That's exactly what I said in L.A., man. What that yeah. one championship one championship do for the Rams? No, didn't do Not anything. Much. I, I you told gotta, you guys. You got to win. You got to be consistently a winner in yeah. this market. All right, let's keep going. What What are some of the, the more viral moments of Harbaugh? All right, Jim. So you lived in wherever, Ann Arbor forever. Uh, where are you going to live? in uh los angeles i gotta i i told my wife this make should i tell him yes yes okay so uh i want to i want to drive my rv out i want to drive my rv out and uh and, and and go to a trailer park uh you know like down by the water or uh by disneyland there'll be two that i've researched that are close to the facility and uh i want to jim rockford it for the, uh, for the for the next uh, couple months until we move to the new facility. That's I have that thought going through my head. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Oh, uh, lethal weapon? I don't know, dude. He got a he got a beautiful house in Coronado. He could go to, you know. Um, he gets, yeah, he's got to hit up Phil Riv, Phil Philly Riv. Hey, dog. What's up with that SUV? That? You got that driver? You yeah, got that SUV? Got that right. All right. But Coronado to El Segundo every day. How about a little bit more? What what else? Did yeah, I uh, Jim Harbaugh, like me, big Ted Lasso guy. Oh yeah, there's some things I've copied from Ted Lasso. I try, I try to emulate Ted Lasso uh, in a lot of ways. That's 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 TV show. Yeah, that's that's one of the best. Jason Sudeikis, uh, you know, tremendous. I got a great story of how I met Jason Sudeikis. Uh, uh, but I think that there's. A life lesson in every every one of those episodes. If you haven't seen that show, piece of advice, if I may, watch the Ted Lasso show. You know what's great? You know what's great? <laughs> Only Jim Harbaugh can get away with that stuff. Like, well, if you you're like an experienced coach, can you imagine? Let's whoever they would have hired Brandon yeah, Staley Mike, doing this, right. right? Brandon Staley doing this. You're like, yeah. well, who is this guy? I know, dude. But you see, yeah. what, what Harbaugh is not only is he a star, but you know, he's so well respected that he can control a room. Like, I'm telling you guys right now, I mean, I'm going old school on you, but I can remember the Chargers would take us. This is when we were all friends. The Chargers would say to us, Hey, listen, we're going to go up to uh Disney and we're going to try and sell to Orange County and LA. We're going to you know, try and get in front of sponsors there. Would you guys come with us? And so Billy Ray and I would go. We were part of the caravan. And Marty Schottenheimer would stand up in front of that room, bro, and he controlled and owned that room. Because everybody in there was like, wow, that guy's real. That guy's a really real NFL head coach. Jim Harbaugh's that guy. Yep. You know, he can he can be funny. He can be charming. He can be serious. But anything else that we should watch or listen no. to? Okay, we're good. No. All right, well, there yeah, you go. I've, you know, it's all good with Jim Harbaugh when you're winning. So, well, the thing is, is this, is that this expectation, because that again, back to uh, being on the Rome show earlier today with, with JT, the brick, he said, what's the expectation. And I think that Browner has set the expectation. The expectation is to win a Super Bowl like immediately. Absolutely. Uh, hit the ground, run. no excuses, hit the ground running. This is not a rookie coach. This is not some coordinator. This guy is a, a one head coach. You have an a one quarterback. There you go. Right. So That's win it. right away. So, and, and but Absolutely. people are, are going to say, yeah, but what about the salary cap? And what about players that they'll lose? Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody's the quarterback. You losing the left tackle. No, you, nope. That's exactly right. That's exactly you right. You losing Mike Williams. Nope. Mike Williams. You, you'll Mike lose Williams. him during the season anyway. I mean, he'll just get hurt. Uh, to answer your question, Brownie. Yes. Yeah. Just you don't know when. Mike Williams. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, hey, listen, fair. Fair. this segment of Kaplan and Crew is being brought to <laughs> us by name, our friends at Prize Picks. Uh, PrizePicks.com slash great friends. PrizePicks.com slash great friends. Now's the time to get in because the big game's only a week away. And you take basketball and football, combine them together in the special section, and you are going to elevate your opportunities to win. PrizePicks.com slash great friends. And for those of you that are watching, you can use our QR code in the bottom right corner of the screen. Hey, um, coming up, very interesting story. You know, um, after all that happened during the AFC championship game between Baltimore and Kansas City, you know, there's a guy from Carlsbad who um, was in the center of it all. And he, the reason he's in the center of it all is because he's the camera operator from CBS. And he's a longtime great friend. And I'm going to tell you guys a story when we come right back of what happened yesterday as we had this conversation on the air, but then what happened off the air. We'll get to all of that on the way. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss this. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino. Hey, great friends. A uh, little halftime here. So this weekend is interesting because there's no football, right? And now we're coming to this realization that football only has one game left. So what are you doing this weekend? Do you have plans yet? Here, let me make a suggestion. Saturday and Sunday morning, the best brunch in South County is at Seven Mile Casino. Now, that may sound strange, but inside Seven Mile Casino is Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar is Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza. So they have the best brunch in South County. It's not my opinion. It is the opinion of San Diego Magazine readers who voted in all of this. Best brunch in South County, San Diego, Saturday and Sunday is at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar inside Seven Mile Casino. So with no football this weekend and potential more rain coming down, come play blackjack, poker, other table games. Watch sports on TV. The bar is amazing. The food is incredible. You're going to have a great time in this completely smoke-free environment. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. And if you go to Seven Mile Casino, I want you to go to the front of the casino. Parking, by the way, free, easy, real quick and convenient. Take a picture. Send a selfie to me on Twitter, at Scott Kaplan, and let me know that you're having a good time and you're winning down at Seven Mile Casino. Um, last thing. So we're going into the weekend again. And, you know, this weekend, I know I'm going to do a lot of exercise, a lot of working out every day, the month of January. And now here we are the second day of February, every day, Athletic Greens, AG1, because I look, I've made some adjustments. I've made some lifestyle changes. I definitely am starting to lose some weight. I'm working out more. I'm getting fitter. There's no doubt about it. But a big part of that is nutrition. I'm not great with my diet but I want to make sure that I'm getting my vitamins, minerals, nutrients, superfoods, probiotics, all the stuff my body needs. That frankly, I'm not doing a great job of feeding it with food. AG1 every day. One packet, shake it up, a little vitamin D, you're ready to go. So do this. Get a subscription now with Athletic Greens. You can click that QR code, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. Athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan for those of you that are listening. Click the QR code for those of you that are watching. Get that subscription. Join me. Let's do this every day. It costs less than a cup of coffee every day. I have a cup of coffee in the morning. And then when I'm starting to think to myself, should I have another cup of coffee? I never do. I always have the athletic greens because you talk about energy and clarity of mind, man. You're going to love this product. Okay. Athletic greens, AG1, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. All right, let's get to the second half. Here we go. All right, great friends. Hey, it's Friday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com. So I said at the end of the last segment that I had to tell you a quick story. And let me tell it, and then I'm going to bring in uh, a guest that we're going we're to spend some time with here this afternoon. Here's the story. So uh, yesterday, Alex was mentioning the, um, the aftermath of the Chiefs-Ravens AFC Championship game. And just all the video and pictures and everything of Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and just how much Taylor Swift has become part of the storyline of the Chiefs season. And of course, heading to the biggest stage on the planet, uh, the biggest performer on the planet, it just all sort of aligns in this crazy, weird way. Alex, I'm trying to remember though yesterday, yeah. how did you bring up uh, our friend Chuck Denton, who is a, a longtime San Diegan? who is also, I mean, one of the absolute premier camera photojournalist dudes in mm -hmm. the entire sports industry. How did that all come up yesterday? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I got the, um, I, I played this video of what CBS is going to use all the cameras. Yeah. And immediately Chuck popped in my head because I've been following him on, on Instagram. You know, he got sent to Buffalo. He ran into Mama Kelsey. 
So right. like he's just like he's documenting this experience that he's had in the in the postseason, which I find fascinating. Yeah, and it just that's how it came up. Right. So, you know, you, you know how there's been like Netflix shows, quarterbacks, there's been Drive or Ride to Survive, there's been the PGA mm -hmm. show, there's been the Tour de France show. You know, they should do yeah. like a they should do a Netflix series called Cameramen. I mean, you look know? at this guy. Look <laughs> I mean, at this guy. Right. He's in the middle of everything, yeah. dude. I mean, you got to remember Chuck Denton last year, and 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 I'm gonna continue the story here in a second. Chuck Denton last year. When we were talking to Jim Nance from the floor of uh, NRG Stadium in Houston, when Jim was like, are you guys not coming to the Final Four? It's my last Final Four. I got courtside seats for you. It was Chuck that was sitting there kind of making that all happen. And then when Alex and I were sitting courtside during the Aztec game, it was Chuck that was there shooting all the video. Jim, mm -hmm. uh, the pregame show. I mean, the guy's amazing. I worked with him for many years at CBS. But here's the best part of the story. So yesterday we're on the air and we're talking about Chuck. Oh, our friend Chuck Denton and these pictures that he took of Taylor Swift and his daughters think he's super cool. And we're following all this on Instagram. And dude, I said this on the radio. I go, oh, don't worry. Chuck's out there listening. Oh, oh yeah. Chuck, Chuck will get a hold of us. He'll, he'll hear this dude. Yesterday afternoon. I don't remember what time it was. 345 in the afternoon or something like that. Chuck sends me a text. He goes, yo, man. I just turned on the radio and within the first 30 seconds, I hear you guys talking about me. So that's just the way the universe works, dude. You know what I'm saying? And so then this morning, like six o'clock in the morning, several of our listeners who have my phone number and who I communicate with, cause I like to get their feedback on the show. They were like, dude, you got to bring Chuck on today. He's such an interesting guy. Guess what? Here he is. CBS <laughs> sports cameraman, Carl's bad resident and longtime great friend. Chuck Denton is back on Kaplan and crew. Hey, Chuck. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing great, awesome, man. Dude. Yourself? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Yeah, literally, I I decided that I was gonna make my wife happy and put in a new uh, shower head, and I said, you know, I'm gonna turn the guys on 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 the app and see what's cooking. And then literally, I swear to God, I'm not kidding you. It was five seconds. I heard my name, and I was like, what What's going on? <laughs> no, it was crazy. I Interesting the, that uh, you know, Scott. He just says, yeah, I'm just putting on a new shower head. He's not making uh, it a big deal. Chuck, you know? Chuck yeah. I'm telling you right now, two weeks ago, I bought my girlfriend a new shower head for Christmas. And like a real man, okay, I opened that box. I took out all that stuff. Uh, Browner, you'll be proud of me. I used a YouTube video just to make sure I was doing things right. And I installed a new shower head. And she thought, oh, really? It's that big of a deal? Now she's like, this is the greatest thing now because I got one of these. And dude, it was like a $30 Amazon shower head, man. It's awesome it changed the way she showers i'm telling you her shower hurt man i don't know what it was like needles it's an amazing experience especially when you add the wand and that's what mm -hmm. my wife wanted and same you know, same it is same. what it is all women want the wand. what happened the to the trade wow okay true what happened to the treadmill sir okay the treadmill you ready for this i got the treadmill they sent me the cord the new cord i tried mm -hmm. to put it together still mm -hmm. didn't work treadmill did not work so i sent back to the people i said hey treadmill doesn't work they refunded my money i bought a different treadmill a better one then i took the old one packed it all up into the box from the new one and now i'm i'm gonna just give the old one to somebody and say here you try and fix it but i got lots of equipment to try and have people fix it chuck i'm becoming right. a real man i don't know if you know this or not. Uh, you're you're you are evolving <laughs> <laughs> like a Pokemon, dude. Right. <laughs> Leveled up. Well, I, I, you know, I, I have, I've, I have met your girlfriend, so she is keeping you honest and straight. So that, that I commend her for. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. T just for everybody who's listening for the first time, can you just, just go back into your history a little bit? How does someone like yourself, in this case, how did you become a camera operator for CBS? Where now you're there at the Super Bowl, you're there at the biggest sporting events in the country. How does that even happen? Well, I was very fortunate. I, I started in television in local news back in uh, back in North Carolina. And um, see, I'm wearing my you can't really see it, but I'm wearing my Tar Heel, Got my nice. Tar Heel shirt on. Nice. Uh, and um, I, you know, it, it ended up evolving. I we moved. My wife was, was also in the business. Uh, she's a reporter and anchor, and uh, she works. She's on Channel Eight. Some she used to be with CBS News, and we moved around a little bit. And next thing you know, through freelance contacts i get a call and and the person i've been trying to get in touch with for years at cbs i wouldn't return my calls or emails said hey so and so gave me your name and 
we have a game, a Thanksgiving Day game in Dallas, of all places. Um, we, you know, would you want to do it? And I'm like, are you kidding? Of course I would. And, um, you know, one thing led to another in relationships, as you know, Scott, and our good friend, Mark Grant, um, my director, my longtime director, I've kind of ridden the wave with him. Uh, he says uh, he's ridden the wave with me, but I've ridden the wave with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last year he was the first year he was doing, he was the lead college basketball director for CBS. So yeah. we've done NFL for years. Dude, we, you know, now we're doing, we jump right into college basketball the week after afterwards, but uh, it's been a long road and um, it's been, it's been a ride. It's been a great Chuck, ride. can I ask you, I've always been curious about this as a viewer because they're at the end of the season, every broadcast, thanks the cameraman right and week 18 it used to be 17 they they go around and every cameraman's wherever they're positioned right. and they're like hey thank you you know yeah. Ch chuck denton you know um is there like promotions like when you first get hired as a cameraman as a freelancer however it is like do you get stuck like okay dude you this is the worst you know position this is how you start and do you work your way up to where you sit next to jim nance for the final four like is that like the top of the top i was always been curious about that I think it's the top of the top. I mean, I, I certainly didn't start there. Um, you know, I remember that phone call from CBS about the Thanksgiving Day game in Dallas with the A crew. And uh, it was back when um, Greg Gumbel and Phil Sims were, were the lead announce team. And I remember thinking, hey, while I have you on the line, what about some other games? And he's like, let's just see how this goes first time. You know, let's just let's just take one game at a time. And I didn't screw it up. So here I am. But, you know, you're you're happy to be in the game. I mean, you're happy to do the worst game of the week or the worst crew of the week with the bare bones minimum, whatever at the time. And, and you're happy to do that and you work your way up and it just kind of is a gradual process. And next thing you know, they, they want you for golf or they want you for basketball and basketball leads to the first round. Then it leads to the regionals. And then, you know, it just, it's a kind of an evolving process, but I'm very, I'm very blessed. I'm very fortunate. Um, my family's put up with a lot <laughs> for me being <laughs> gone and having two girls and my wife's been a real champion, just sort of, you know, leading the being the CEO at home. Yeah. Chuck mm -hmm. Denton is uh, with us. Chuck is a Carlsbad resident and he is a cameraman for CBS. Chuck, where will you be during the Super Bowl? Uh, my assignment is going to be um, on the AFC sideline, on the Chiefs sideline. So as you're watching the game, we always talk near side and far side. Near side is what you see closest to you. Far side is the AFC team this year. So the, the so the, 49ers would be on the near side, Chiefs would be on the far side. So I'm going to be on the far side. How did you, after the AFC Championship game, how did you, this whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey thing come to be? Is is it actually part of your job to run onto the field afterwards and follow somebody? Um, well, I'm curious how that all happened. Well, I, I was, you know, the, the particular camera I was doing was different from what I had done in Buffalo because they add they add additional equipment as you keep further, you go further along into the playoffs. So the particular camera I had had no post game assignments. Honestly, it was more or less get the best picture, be where you need to be. You know, it's take it or leave it. If I didn't get them anything, they weren't going to miss it. So mm -hmm. everything I had was everything I was going to get was going to be bonus. So. They, what they do is uh, at the end of the game, and they're going to do the end of the Super Bowl. So they stay, they bring in this barricaded area, and they bring in the stage. They wheel it in, and it ends up being a, a that's the platform that Jim Nance comes up and presents the trophy and all that. And so it's, it's the same. And so we have certain credentials that we allow us to get into that that area. Now there's always people that kind of squirm their way in, and you're dealing with a lot of chaos and mayhem at the end of the game. So I literally, I literally, as you're facing the stage, I kind of came in on the left side. And I saw Mahomes hug Kelsey and I saw Mahomes move on because he was going to go up on the stage with Jim Nance. And I said, and Kelsey was there. And in my ear, our director, Mike Arnold, I heard him say, um, Taylor Swift, I think Taylor Swift's coming to the field. I think she's coming to the field. And he was assigning a camera that was a wireless camera that didn't have any cables to go and sort of track her from the tunnel because, you know, the cables, there were no cables involved to, to, to you know, to trip anybody. So I knew if I stayed next to Travis Kelsey, she was going to come right to me um, in my area, unless they moved him, of course. And I knew the, the more people that get in there, the, the more constrictive it is. And then you've got people stepping on top of your cables and you really can't maneuver as much as you want to once it gets really kind of hairy in there. So I, I, st stayed, I stood my ground and stayed beside Kelsey. And then her people, her security people came in 
with a mixture of the chief security people and they formed a little protective barricade. I don't know why they thought that they were protecting the president, but they acted <laughs> that way. Um, and that was a little bit of an issue that got has gotten addressed. But the bottom line is she wasn't planning on coming to the field. And and that's what we were told. And something changed. Who knows? Maybe Brittany Mahomes said, hey, why don't you come to the field? Let's go. We got a celebration. And it got a little chaotic. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It got really chaotic down there. But I just happened to be, luckily, uh, there was another camera guy on the opposite side. But what's interesting about that to me is that they showed my angle, which was Taylor Swift's face hugging Kelsey. So I've got the back of Kelsey's head mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, we're watching rather it right than now. rather than no one wants to see his face rather than the shot of Kelsey's <laughs> face, they would rather put Taylor Swift's face on, which I thought of was course. interesting. Yeah, and, and then you see you see Ed, uh, his dad, right there hugging his dad. So um, it just kind of worked out the way it did. Are you are you taking the camera as you're standing? Are you like lifting the camera off your shoulder and like shooting upward? Is that how that that shot comes to be? Because of the way the security guys were, they were interlocking arms. And really kind of pushing. And of course, the steel guys are trying to push you. So you're kind of like a sandwich. And so I had no choice but to do that. I and mean, that's just, that's the way it is. And you can't even really see what's in the viewfinder. You're just sort of like, you know, yeah. that you're, you're hoping, yeah, yeah. You're hoping right. that it's in there somewhere. <laughs> right. you know, his eyebrows off. Is this, is this the craziest post game like you've ever been, been involved in minus the Super Bowl? Because obviously the Super Bowl is crazy because it's like the universe is running on the field. And like you said, they're protecting this woman like she's the president of the United States. And you know, their welfare, their financial welfare is tied to whether or not they can protect her. And so when you're trying to, is this the craziest it's been for you? Absolutely. No doubt about it. it the funny thing about this is like, I've been around the, pre I've been around multiple presidents. I've been around the secret service. I've been, you know, I've been in rope lines with these guys and it's all controlled. They, they react to behavior. They react to, they see somebody lunging. They see somebody suspicious. They see somebody with a hoodie and a backpack or something crazy. They react to that. These guys were coming down panicked. You could see it in their face. I'm talking about the security people. They were panicked. They 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 did not expect her to go. They were told she wasn't going to go. And then last minute, there's an audible. It's like the president getting out of the out of the car and wanting to go into McDonald's. All of a sudden, it's an yeah, right. It's it's really like that. So it, it's, this was nuts. I mean, this was good chuck nuts. How many? But like, if you could estimate, is it when you say the security, it's nuts. Is it her security team? Is it because the Chiefs have their own security team? The NFL has a security team. Um, the the facility in Baltimore has. I, I'm just trying to figure out. Or was out. the problem that they worked together and they didn't know what they were doing? It, it, it was a mixture. It was a mixture, honestly. Now, the ironic thing is you had her people. The guy right below me was the director of chief security. Um, and they just honestly, they're doing the best they can. I mean, it was a little pushing and shoving going on, but it, doing the best they can. And then there's not much you can do about it. It was a mixture of her security people with the earpieces. You see one right there uh, beside to her right. That little guy? The li little guy, yeah, who looks, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the guy on the upper left picture, the guy with the beard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the suit. another one of her security guys, yeah. And then there's an NFL, or I'm sorry, Raven security guy there in the suit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a mixture of, of all three. And I, I think there, need, there definitely will be a plan, a better plan for – if the Chiefs win and she comes down, I, I fully expect that to happen. But, but so people she, are saying when the Chiefs win? When the Chiefs win. <laughs> yeah, because the, there's no way the NFL can't get that shot, Chuck. They need you, man. They need you to be next to Taylor. Well, and it literally, literally, she turned the other way. It would have been the guy behind me. I mean, we had three cameras in there. Mm -hmm. and were the security were, guys respectful? Like, hey, these are the camera guys from CBS. They're properly credentialed. They've got on the right vest. They, they've got their camera equipment. Like, are they respectful or are they like, hey, we don't care who you are. Get out. Move. Probably the latter. Oh, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just, to, be, just to be nice about it. You know, yeah. uh, everyone was doing the best they can. So I give them a little bit of leeway. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a tough job to protect the most popular entertainer in the world on, on an unscheduled stop. Yeah. But what you have to understand is, just getting into the building is a is a little bit of a controlled environment. Getting onto the field is a very controlled environment. And getting into this little restricted area that you're supposed to have the right credentials is a highly restricted area. Mm -hmm. So they're not working with, they're not walking her from, you know, the hotel entrance to the car past all these pedestrians. They're, she's in a secure, the further she gets onto the field, the more secure it becomes. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think it, they were just a little bit in panic mode and there was some pushing going on and there was some meetings and, and certain people took notice and there's been conversations and I don't think that's going to happen again. But I mean, I give these guys a little bit of, you know, some, some grace here, you know, yeah. cause they're, what, they're doing the best they can. What's the hardest you've ever had to push somebody? Um, the hardest I've probably ever had to push somebody. I don't really, I'm not really a pusher, but you had um, to. Uh, you had yeah, to. just to get the I, shot or you know to do your job it's going to be one of those super bowl type post game things it's where yeah. you're you're all of a sudden you take the shot and you're like uh, some guy's some guy's head comes in front and you've got to make it you, you know you've got to move um you know i've never like knocked anybody down that i'm aware, that i'm aware of um, have you ever been uh, knocked down oh yeah i've been knocked down yeah i've been not, not not much not much i've been more or less i i've i've had you know, I've had a few issues in certain certain cities where the local photographers and the Jumbotron guys think they have the same access that you do. Because the NFL, NFL Films and CBS or Fox, whoever's doing the game, has there's two different lines on the sidelines. And so we have the and Scott knows this. We have we have the front line, which means we're in front of everybody else, including the Jumbotron, the team photographers, all of those people have to be behind us. And we've had a couple of people. I remember the first Charger game we did was week three at StubHub Center, the old StubHub Center where the mm -hmm. Chargers moved to L.A. And some guy was in there like, you know, we're always here. And I'm like, bro, you've had <laughs> you've had a team for five minutes. OK, get back. <laughs> yeah. he wouldn't he wouldn't listen. So I said, you know, I'm no problem. I'm happy to call my tech manager and have NFL security come here and remind you what the policy is, why CBS pays two billion dollars to, to broadcast this. Yeah. And they came down and I never saw him again. It's just the weirdest oh, thing. Though. The, the, the security thing though, is, is very interesting. I, I, I can recall, Chuck, you and I doing a game years ago. I want to say it was the Chiefs and the Raiders. I'm sure it was the Chiefs and the Raiders. Alex Smith was still the quarterback of the Chiefs. This is going back a while. And there was like some kind of delay in the game. I don't remember why. There was a delay of the game. And the producer of the telecast said to me in my ear, go to Andy Reid and ask him what he wants to do. And I'm like, well, hold on, wait a second. You want me to go to the coach? And ask him what he wants to do about the start of the game. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what I want you to do. I'm like, okay. So I walk up to Andy Reid on the field and I go, coach, you know, he's, I, he's already been with me in meetings the day before. So it's not like he, like he doesn't know me. I go, coach, Hey, they're asking me in the truck, what you want to do about this and this and this. And now all of a sudden here comes the PR guy and the PR guy's pissed that I would dare speak to coach before the game like this. I'm like, I'm just doing my job, bro. Later in the season, we had a game in uh, Kansas city. It was the last game. It was like a like a Christmas game. And I'm standing there on the sidelines with the Chiefs. And the security guy throws a forearm shiver into my back. And I'm like, what the hell, man? And he's like, oh, you think I don't remember what you did in Oakland? You think I don't remember that? Like, like these security guys can be a little freaking crazy, man. <laughs> like, he was, he was pissed that I had the audacity to speak to the coach when the producer. And I remember the following week. Like th there was all kinds of controversy. The PR was calling CBS and see, and I was like, bro, this is what you told me to do. You told me to go talk to him. So I can only imagine that when you have Taylor Swift down there and you know, like the, the Kelsey parents, you know, you look at those pictures, they're trying to celebrate how families normally do. And then you throw her into the mix and all the security. It's freaking nuts. Chuck, um, I, we got to hustle. We got like 30 seconds left, man. Closing thoughts. Your daughters thought you were so cool. For being so close to Taylor Swift, right? My phone lit up like a Christmas tree. I'm just telling you right now. And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, everywhere you are, you're on Twitter, you're on this, you're on that. And it's like, well, it, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm literally within arm's length of the biggest, biggest star in the world. So of course that's going to happen. Amazing. But it was fun. It, they, it made their highlight. You know, they're now Chiefs fans. They're saying, what can you do to get us to the game? I'm like, I don't know. It's very expensive. I mean, the Talk prices are way up. Talk to Jim Nance. I mean, the prices are way up from last year. And but your I, cool dad meter exploded in yeah, this last couple bit. weeks, dude. A little All bit. the yeah. way, bro. Yeah, All we're, the way. We're, I, it's yeah. been good around the household for, for, yeah. for me for a minute. So I bet. Hey, Chuck, um, we so appreciate you doing this with us. Um, we appreciate you always listening, by the way. And um, and let's just let's do this. Go have a great time at the Super Bowl. Let's talk after the Super Bowl. You guys are going to be there, right, on Radio Row? Alex I'll will be, be there, there on Radio Re on Radio Row representing. You're not coming, Scott? I, this is a year I can't. I got too much other stuff oh. happening in real life. So, Chuck Denton, great to be with you. Um, we'll talk to you right after the Super Bowl. Everybody stick around. We're in the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. It's Friday afternoon. What an amazing conversation with Chuck. And I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as we did. Stick around, everybody.
Hey, great friends. It's Friday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man heading off into the weekend. Uh, hopefully we don't get poured on all weekend long and hopefully everybody's safe out there. I know there's been a lot of talk about what's going on down in Southeast San Diego when these rains come in. So I just hope everybody's good. Hope everybody's safe. And I'm um, looking outside and there's some good weather right now and some nice sunshine. So I'm hoping it stays that way. All right, Grande, Brown Man, we're yeah. in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. I still want to get to a Tory Holistics highlight of the day in this segment. I love got a good today's one. show, by the way. Love today's show. Got a good one for you. I go oh, like, like Steve you. Harvey. We got a good one for you. Um, I love today's show so far. Um, the Harbaugh stuff, the Chuck Denton, Taylor Swift deal that we just got into. I mean, I'm just, I, I love today's show. It's, it's been a great day. So let's keep rolling. Because um, yesterday we started asking everybody um, if they're getting ready for the Padres season. And we posted a bunch of polls, a series of polls on our website, kaplanandcrew.com, because we wanted to gauge from everybody how you're feeling in advance of the Padres season. These polls, by the way, um, <laughs> we pretty much stole all the questions from not pretty much. the athletic. Yeah, not, yeah, you know what? Not pretty much. We, we pretty much we did. We did. We just stole. So let's just take a quick look here of how people are voting so far. And I just would encourage everybody go to Kaplan and crew.com. You'll see how, how the votes are, are totaling. If you, if you just, uh, you know, open that side panel, it's on our website. Mm -hmm. So how they, how they looking so far, Alex, how confident are you in the Padres are headed in the right direction? Everybody's uh, unsure. Mm -hmm. Unsure. How yeah. confident are you in uh, the new ownership? Unsure. Uh, how confident are you in President of Baseball Ops? Uh, not very unsure. unsure. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you rate the hiring of uh, Mike Schilt? Fair. How <laughs> would you rate the December trade of Soto? I didn't like it. I hated it. Uh, how concerned are you about the Padres payroll? Very concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the most recent That's the one I don't get. That's the one I don't get. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Which one? Well, the, the most recent poll we posted was about Harbaugh. Which one don't you get, Brown? The concern about the payroll. Like, you know what it is. What do you mean you yeah. just concerned? They're not hiding three, anymore. <laughs> right. You got three guys who are literally locked. Well, four guys. Five four guys, guys. Locked in. Period. Locked in. Uh, Bogarts, Tatis, Manny. Jake. I mean, crowd on count Cronenworth because that's not on the scale of what we're talking about. He ain't nowhere near there. You darn no, is locked and Joe, in for a and Joe long Musgrove. Time. Mm -hmm. And then okay, then now, now throw in Jake Cronenworth in some way, shape, or form. He locked in too. Like all you that's can do is team. trade these contracts. That's it. Yeah. Those are your guys. Those are your core guys. Everybody else will be either called up or a small money deal. That's well, that's your I squad. just think the problem with the payroll, and people will always question it because it was significantly higher last year and you know what sucks is that the guys that you have locked in didn't perform last year if right. your five guys were freddie freeman mookie Betts of that nature nobody would care about the payroll you'd be like yeah we're good At we're all. golden we're gonna like surround them with young guys coming up we got the fourth best ranked farm system we got a bunch of guys that are gonna play this year but the yep. fact is that manny underperformed bogart's underperformed Tatis was okay, but we expected more. Jake incredibly underperformed. You, you was hurt. Freaking Musgrove was hurt. So, like, that's why I think to answer our own questions, Browner, even though we know what it is, that doesn't right. give you a lot of confidence in that payroll that you are spending. Well, well, no, I think there's another layer, which is so you've you've now expected the Padres to spend like the Dodgers. And that was a one-year deal. Yeah. You know, they went out and got they got Bogarts. They'd already had Tatis locked up. They gave Manny the money. They gave Musgrove his money. They way overspent on Bogarts. They paid Cronenworth for what he had done, not for what he was going to do. And so, you know, they just, so now you're like, okay, well, now that we've become accustomed to being a big money team, Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, Padres, now that we've become accustomed to being a big money spending team, Where's the spend? And the answer is right. that that was a one-time deal. It's over now. But you, I don't know okay, if it was a one-time deal or if it was a Peter Seidler deal. Well, that's what it was. It was a Peter Seidler deal. It was a one-time makes Peter that a one-time deal. But even yeah, the well, Dodgers don't spend every year. No organization spends spends every year. The Yankees take years off. The Red Sox take years off. The Astros take years off. The Rangers take years off. The Cardinals take years off. Like you can be competitive. The the, the Braves let Freddie Freeman walk. 
Like you, you yeah. Can't I mean, take you need yourself. you need your guys. You need your guys. You need you need Jackson Merrill to turn into James Altman. You know, you Absolutely. need your you need you know name Dylan Lesko to turn into Bobby Miller. You need guys that are young, that are inexpensive come to come up and perform. That's what. It, and if you spend with so all the guys you much, spend money on, right? And if you spend point. so much of your resources, so much of your time scouting and signing these kids from the Dominican and wherever, if you're, if you, if that's AJ Preller's strength, then at some point we got to stop trading them away. Right. At some point right. you got to like see what you got. All right. So let's, let, so my understanding is that uh, AC did an interview with uh, the new manager, Mike Schilt. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So let's get uh, into it. Uh, we did a Q and a with Mike Schilt. This uh, was released today. I can go in order and just give you updates on what Mike Schilt has to say as uh, the Padres report to spring training on Super Bowl Sunday. So they are them and the Dodgers are operating a week ahead of everybody because they're Super they play Bowl a week. Sunday. It was like, hey, Skip, can't we show up on Monday? No, because, you know, you got to do what you got to do, man. Bro, Off come to a bad on. Bad start already. It's Off Super Bowl Sunday, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. Really? We ain't doing no work. Yeah. We ain't doing no really? work. Stop it. Stop. I mean, I mean, what you're time reporting. Are we done? You're not doing anything. What, what yeah. time are we done? Because I I want to watch the game and I would like to see the pregame. And I got I ordered wings and burgers. Are, are y'all gonna have the game on in the in the clubhouse when yeah. we get there? You know what? Are, are, you know what? I like set up y'all party. Y'all got set up for us. This is the kind of year we're gonna have. This is the kind of year we're gonna have. <laughs> <laughs> Comes the explosions. Right, well, there he is. Look at Brown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love all yeah. the effects. I want to do that. That's gonna be Taylor Swift soon. Um. Yeah. All right, let's start it off real quick. Uh, who is your closer? Mike Schilt. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, I'll just read it. The good news is we got a lot of tremendous candidates. Obviously, Robert Suarez has been in that role and done it. Uh, Yuki Matsui's been in that, done that in Japan. We added Wendy Peralta. I'm not going to give you an absolute answer because depending mm -hmm. on the day, depending on the matchups, it could be anybody okay. who's available. I, listen, you I know don't what? want I don't that. I don't, I don't want that. that. I don't have a problem. I don't with that. want that. I, I, I want really consistency don't. from the position because if we know, if they know, correction. If we know, then they know. I want It'll consistency be, from the position, dude. I don't. I, think, I don't feel that way. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. If if you don't have like a, I'll star have a problem closer, with it in August and on we'll September. Say, if if you don't have if, a star closer, let these guys work it out. Let's see who has if it. Somebody, if, if somebody blows a save or two, are they going to be thrown back out there again? Like, define the roles, and if a guy fails at the role, then you rotate the roles. But having that role be rotating, the closer is a very, very important position. And if the guy doesn't know he's the guy, it, it just it's I don't I don't like that. I want that position to be structured. So is he gonna do the same thing for a starting rotation? Let's see if AC asks that question. I, who, I also who's your starter? Also, who's your who's oh, oh, you, Jesus, guys, man. you guys are Goodness, coming in dude, hot, man? I know it, it, dude. It, today is, guys, is February, February 2nd, second, bro. Calm down. For real, yo. It's February second. I they can't have, do you, no, you, I can't first do you got, like first anger both, Padre talk today. First of all, both of you guys got mad about the day they're reporting. Ridiculous. Second, now we're getting mad about February second. Who's the closer? We don't know yet. Like then I'm everything's gonna piss. I'm everything's like, gonna piss you off right I'm now. I'm like, man. I'm like, dude, like, I don't have a problem with it. I'm curious. Everything, to see it everything I'm about to read to you is gonna piss you off to both of you. If you're gonna be not mad me. about what day, I'm not pissed you, off. You were mad about well, uh, Super Bowl yeah, Sunday. See. Yeah, well, well, he just got to make it. Yeah, right. that, that to me is like, come on, man, really? Like, come on. Right? I mean, come on. It's Super Bowl Sunday, bro. Give me a break. I mean, listen, this man is driving the wagon again if he's going to be that mad about it. All right, let's hear what else. Woo. Let's hear what else. Let's hear what else. All right. What's up with Manny? Yeah. Uh, what's up? What's up? Is that the question? What's up with Manny? <laughs> I'm asking the questions I ask. That's the way I interpret it. All right. uh, Shield says he's had a great offseason. Our medical staff, Mike McCoy, been with him in San Diego. Man, he is killing his offseason. He's been able to swing. I can tell you he's on pace to be able to be ready offensively. Question. And that's ready for the start of the season at third base. Schilt says he has an opportunity. That's a key word. He has an opportunity to start the season at third base. He's on target to be able to get some opportunities to play in spring training at third base, but I'm not going to put any time frame on it. Obviously, Manny had uh, elbow surgery, so they're not sure if he can throw the ball, or maybe he can't throw the ball. Are we cool there? Did yeah, I have, about no, I, have, there? I have no, I got nothing on that. I, I don't all right, care. Browner, get ready because this is I'm gonna talk to you directly now. Oh no, what position will Xander Bogart play this season? <laughs> <laughs> you ready for the answer? That's a good question. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> um, right now he's playing shortstop. 
Question. Have you talked to him about a move to the right side of the infield? Schilt, not in earnest. We're going to spend some time together soon. He did a nice job at shortstop. Obviously, Kim won a gold glove and could play shortstop. The great news is there are options here. If you put somebody at that shortstop position, <laughs> that's not Xander Bogart, and it's not Tatis, it's going to be a brawl in that locker room. You, you can't put Kim – you cannot put Kim at short with a new manager. You can't do that. Come on. What are we doing? Mm. What are we Come doing? On. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, this, is, are we doing? this is off the rails already, man. Mm-hmm. This is off All the right. rails already. All right. Well, I haven't even got to Tatis yet, so we'll get uh, uh, Jake Cronenworth. Oh, man. Uh, Jake had a down year in 2023. Let me guess. He's killing your, his offseason. What is your <laughs> understanding of the factors that what gives you confidence? He will rebound. I definitely have confidence he's going to rebound. Jake's uh-huh. a winning player. The game can be uh-huh. hard. When you say you had a down year, people always go to the offensive numbers. I thought Jake had a productive year in a lot of areas. He played really good d- defense at first place, mm-hmm. which is what we're looking to have him start the season. Oh. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So Maybe he'll be the closer, Browner. Yeah, so Jake at first to start the season, and he's going to have <laughs> a rebound offensive year. Okay. All right. Question. Yeah. We Question. have established that Fernando Tatis Jr. is a right fielder, correct? Schilt. Yes. That's a good question. Yes, he does play right field. Question, does he play right field exclusively? Schilt, at the moment? Yeah. The good news is the way our club is built, we have players that are flexible. This guy was a top 10 shortstop a couple of years ago. And then became a platinum full glove winner in right. Maybe he'll he's be the comes. He's strong. <laughs> strong <laughs> penciled in to play right field. And that's the expectation for him and for us. But things always can change. So I'm not mm-hmm. going to close the door on anything. At the moment, there's nothing that indicates he's not going to play anything other than right field at the moment. Mm-hmm. What about like the uh, fact I, that they don't have other outfielders? Maybe play center and left also? Yeah, uh, obviously uh, there are moves to be made. You uh, have to fill the outfield. As for the other <laughs> outfielder currently in your position, Jose Azacar, blah, blah, blah. He's like, it's a big spring training for everybody. That's There's nothing there. Like So those are the, the main core guys. That's your, He did talk about the rotation. He says... Darvish, 100%. Musgrove, 100%. They're good to go. There's no limitations on them for spring training. So that was like the big news for the starting rotation. Michael and King. Are there rotator the number ones? Uh, there is. If I, Do you want me to make you mad? Hold on. <laughs> Let me read it. <laughs> the rotating number ones? Oh, we don't know. Oh, this. oh we are, we, well, the best guy. I'll take the ball. Opening day. All right. Cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm trying to find what a, the answer well, to Wow. That. Come on, stand on something, bro. Stand on some business, fam. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? You're the manager now. Or oh, get AJ to tell you who the yeah, starter is. Right. Let, me right. Let me check with closer is. Right. Let me check. Text him. Yeah. Text him mm-hmm. mid-interview. Hey, who's the closer? Who's the starter? Like, what? Well, I'm doing an interview with AC right now. Yeah. Like, what? Come, come down on, here man. and tell him. And, and by the way, come down here and tell him what to write. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he didn't mention who the, the opening day starter is. Nobody in baseball does on February 2nd. Sorry to disappoint. But, but you know. Uh, he did say, we have two established frontline guys, Darvish and Musgrove. I'm really impressed by them. You couldn't ask for two better guys at the top of your rotation. So it starts with them. Then there's open spots with a lot of great candidates. You start with King. He's pitched in the bullpen. He's been in the past, but he started all the way back in Boston College. He's done a nice job in his MLB starts. He's coming in as a starter for us, and we're excited about him. Uh, he, he's going to get the opportunity to start. Then you got Johnny Brito, Randy Vasquez. They're coming into camp as starters. The guys that you John, just got from Johnny me. Burrito, Jay Honey Brito, Johnny Brito, Johnny Burrito. If you, if you got Justin Verlander on your roster, he's your opening day guy. If Clayton Kershaw is healthy and upright and and committed to pitching, and he's on your roster for the Dodgers, he's your opening day starter. And if you tell me anybody else, that's a lie because Clayton Kershaw gonna tell you I'm the opening day starter. Like Who was your is, opening day starter last year for the Padres? It was uh, Joe Musgrove. Oh, he was hurt. No, he was hurt. He was hurt. He was hurt. So it was Blake Snell, wasn't it? Yeah. By the way, side right. note, total By side the way, note. Who was the best pitcher? Who was the better uh, I, pitcher? Uh, quick question. Still not signed. How come? Yeah, how come Blake Snell's not Yo! signed? Yo! You hear, you hear what he wants. No. What does he Woo! want? 
So he turned down. I love you. Oh, I don't want to mess this up because. All right, and then we got to get to a highlight of the day because yeah, we, yeah. we have not covered a lot of stuff we wanted to get to today. Oh man, Shocker. what is it? Because it was the, the number was <laughs> the dude. The number was wild. So I believe the Yankees offered him 150 million. He turned that down. From my from what I have read, ah, oh, where is it? I don't want to mess the number up because it's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants, according to multiple, according to the Yankees, this is what the Yankees have told their reporters. Mm-hmm. Blake Snell is asking for nine years, two hundred seventy million. Have fun, buddy. Oh, man, going somewhere. Yeah, nine years, you, thirty million a year. Good luck. He turned down one hundred and fifty million from the Yankees. Dude, he he is just he. His Ooh. problem is is he was he was with the Padres. And he watched the Padres give away mega contracts. Give away money. Yeah. And he now he thinks that like everybody's doing that. He ain't, dude, we've seen the best of Blake Snell. Nobody's that paying you for gone, what you've bro. done. Yeah. Nobody's that paying you for out. what you've done. Go And go I think home. I think the league is is smart enough to realize that the dude did had two good years, two very good years. And he happened to win the Cy Young both those years. Yeah. And everything else, he's been yeah. good. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah, well, let's do this. Let, let me just say this. Wow. Um, man. I'd still love well, to get everybody. Blake, we got a year for you. I'd still love to get everybody to vote on our polls. If you go to Kaplan and crew.com, I, I, by Monday, I'd like to see if we have a really nice sample size of how Padre fans are feeling in advance of spring training, which apparently starts on Super Bowl Sunday. All right, Alex, I think it's time now yeah. to get to our highlight of the day. Cause we've not had a chance to discuss a few other things that I think we should probably get to before we get out of here today. Okay. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. It's Friday. Make your way it's to Friday. Tori in California Holistics and use our promo code BETTERBUD to get 20% off your purchase when you spend a min- minimum of 75 bucks. Promo code BETTERBUD. Better mm. bud. What's today? Friday. Let's flower Friday. Okay. Uh so they got lots of deals happening. 25% off Farm Cut is one of the ones that I know off the top of my head. So Farm Cut's a great brand. Farm Cut is a great brand. Seriously. I mean, I only know that because my kids were home from college and we had a lot of that stuff around. Oh, so. By the way. I have oh, a, wait a second. These are, the, oh, oh. these are the gummies that I was recommended last time. So I got to start trying them because my pen is officially out now. Mm-hmm. These were... Where's the oh, I know wild, wild. Yeah, I know that brand. So I'm gonna get down on some of these tonight. What is it? Sleep. Is it? Is it bad when somebody shows you the box and they don't know? You're the like, brand oh, you're not wild. Oh, oh, really? The wilds? Oh, I know those. I know that 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 packaging. Yeah, I think I got a farm cut. Oh no, old old friends, HVGC. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Anyways, hey, I'm listen. About- uh, let me let me say as far as the highlight of the day, Alex. I'd love it if you would set us up for the weekend. And what is happening with San Diego State's basketball team? Because we've we've talked about this as the week has gone on. You know, unbeaten at home, but not doing well on the road. Struggling everywhere else. Yeah, and mm-hmm. got to get they're a win at- this weekend. So let's yeah, talk about at home. Let's, let's set that up. They're at home tomorrow mm-hmm. against Utah State, who's ranked number seventeen in the country. They're nineteen and two. Uh, they score a lot. They got a great defense. They're clearly the best team in the Mountain West so far this year. Uh, they just beat Wyoming. Colorado, uh, San Diego State just lost to Colorado State in Colorado. Uh, the game is at 1230 national television on Fox, not Fox Sports 1, on Fox, the big Fox, tomorrow, 1230. I wonder who calls those games on Fox. Is that like, do they do they get Gus Johnson to call those games? I mean, Gus was so great for so long on CBS doing college basketball. And now that Fox has college basketball and Fox has Gus Johnson doing, you know, football, mm-hmm. college football. Do they bring Gus Johnson? I mean, do they bring in a heavy hitter like Gus for a Saturday afternoon broadcast? I'll, I'll be watching that game tomorrow afternoon. I can tell you. Uh, I just need a second to look it up. But, yeah, yeah. Um, that's happening tomorrow, 1230. Okay, okay very good. Um, other stuff that we didn't get to today that will definitely uh, – that definitely oh, deserves what? just a little bit of time. What's up, bro? Carl Weathers died, man. No way. Hey. Yeah, no man. Way. No way. This world. is – no way, man. Apollo Creed? Damn. Yeah, bro. He RIP'd us. Dude, San Diego State alum. Dude, he was still looking really good, man. Right, I wonder what the deal is. He was in Mandalorian looking great 76. in Mandalorian. 76. Hey, man. Damn, 76, dude? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's so bad. You just totally stopped me in my tracks, man. man Carl that's, Weathers that's dead. Tough, man. I mean, you talk about a guy who was still looking good. You were talking about Jim Hurl, Jim Hill earlier. 
I mean, Carl right. Weathers, 76 years old, Apollo Creed, Ooh. 70. I'm just looking to see if there's anybody that's giving any information as to what, what the deal is. He's survived by his ex-wife and their two sons, more to come. This is like, this is happening. You know, by the time everybody's listening to this on radio, this is from earlier in the day, but still. Is he, is he the most famous alum from San Diego State? Like, I don't, I don't know because I'm. Hmm. Like he was in a lot of movies, man. A yeah. lot. Obviously, of all the Rockies, the Predator movies, Happy Gilmore. The Mandalorian is one of the biggest shows on TV right on now the, yeah. or streaming right now. Dude, seventy six like, oh, is too young, man. That is just way too young. How how can hmm. that man? And for a guy who was in such great shape, yeah. you know. Um, but we just don't know. We have no idea. Oh, that's so sad. That is man, Browner, you got me. You got me. Well, hey, uh, radio listeners, I'll just say this. We're back on Monday. You know, uh, we'll be back on Monday. I'm sure we'll be able to know the story by then, hopefully. Um, radio listeners, hang. Uh, everybody else, let's go get uncensored um, on the podcast. All right, everybody. That's going to do it. We're wrapping up the week. Yeah, we are. You yeah. so. any big plans this weekend? No, no I'm. I'm, I'm kind of like. Uh, what's it called when you? I'm tired. not leaving my house because I don't want to get oh. sick before Vegas. Mm -hmm. I don't want to contract COVID, which all of a sudden is everywhere. Back. No. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who's got it? Not me. People. <laughs> it's stacking up. Yeah. Really? Let me hey, let me let me say something to y'all because I, I I let y'all get away with something previously and I should have oh. said something then but I didn't so let me say this right now okay mm -hmm. don't tell me how to Padre fandom sir if I want to <laughs> be pissed on February the second that we don't have a closer named let me be pissed about that okay <laughs> if we don't if our manager is gutless and he can't tell me who the closer is <laughs> on February second give me that in give me that right okay. Cause I'm confused. Yeah, wow. Whoa. You all right, that big fella? Almost mm -hmm. took you. Almost got a black eye from the water bottle. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Give me my piece. If that's what I want, give it to me. Cause I'm telling you right now, I don't like that. You the manager yeah. now. You in charge, or somebody's telling you you the manager, and you think you in charge, Mister Puppet. So, Mister Puppet, please have all your, all your answers together when it's time for the interview. If yeah, you've been sitting about with AC, but think about hmm. who's being interviewed by. He's being interviewed by the, a friendly. And that's my whole point. So when you sit down with a friendly, you should have all the information for these softball questions, bro. If you, you're a head coach, they're going to put this thing on a tee ball for you. You know how to knock that thing out the park. Oh, here's our closer. Oh, here's our starter. If healthy. Now, you can caveat everything with healthy. And if you're going to tell me, well, Xander Bogarts might be the shortstop. So you just set the whole house on fire. That's all people need to hear. Well, maybe, maybe he was last year. Tatis can't play shortstop. Kim did win a Golden Glove. Hey, man, listen, if you won the Golden Glove, that's where you play. If you won the Platinum Glove, that's where you're going to play. St stand on your business, man. But Kim won the Golden Glove. Around. Kim won the Golden Glove being utility guy because he's so good everywhere. Okay. Well, guess what? We're going to put you at second base because you're good everywhere. You, you might as well be good at second base. There's a glove over there for you. Go pick it up. Uh, well, I mean, I listen, they, they paid Bogarts to play shortstop and to uh, to not play him there, you know, is just it just seems I mean, well, it just well, it just it just goes to show you what a terrible decision it was to sign him in the first place. But that being said, Brown, I want to tell you, I'm not telling you how to be a fan. I don't care. You can be a fan however you want to be a fan. I don't give a shit. But I'm fanning. I just don't want to be yelled at on February 2nd about the Padres. That's that was just oh, me. Guess what? Mm. Guess, well, what? Well, guess well, what? Guess well, what? Guess well, what? There's a place somewhere in this city where people yelling about. A uh, Padre baseball on February second too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on Twitter right. nonstop. Yeah, it's like yeah, you guys are that upset in, in December. Yeah, so there you go. Anyway. Put that clip uh, out for people. Can I? See what they can I bring it. something up to? I know there's at least three people in the chat that care about it, and we didn't mm -hmm. talk about oh. it. Okay. Who the biggest? What? The biggest news in the sports world that happened this week? Mm -hmm. Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes, joining Ferrari. Oh my god! All right. Do you see what happened to uh, this? The is Ferrari this is the stock? equivalent? The, not only the Ferrari stock, you see what happened to Lewis Hamilton's bank account? No, how much? 100 million a year. Damn. To drive a car, to be a driver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to risk your life. To be how about more like that. Not really anymore. Yeah, with the people out here driving. I mean, you, it's, it's got to be one of the gnarliest crashes in the history. Like, 
I mean, listen, knock on wood, it could happen. This is like people were always like someone on the chat said, like, put it in NFL terms. I was like, we basically saw it with Brady, but imagine Brady not going to the Bucks, like some shit, not shit, but like some lower end organization. Imagine Tom Brady goes to the Cowboys, a team that dominated forever, a team that's like the biggest team in America. Like, imagine Tom Brady, who won six six Super Bowls with the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to Tampa, imagine him going to Dallas. That's mm-hmm. the exact same thing that happened. Right, like going from Lewis Mercedes Hamilton. to Ferrari is is like you're you're going from great. Well, to like the best. New England, I, did they win any Super Bowls before Tom Brady? No, but they no, right? in their ass kicked right. in the Super Bowl by like, the Bears, 1985, like, yeah. baby. Yeah. Like Mercedes wasn't they got beat by the Packers yeah. too. Mercedes yeah. wasn't anything until Lewis got there, and then he right. won seven World Championships. But he Ferrari hasn't been anything in a long time. They haven't won in like 20 years, the championship. So, like, literally, that's the Cowboys, right? The, the Cowboys, they haven't won in forever. But so, now they've they got, got the money. They've got the name. They've got the, the name, brand. They got it all. But everything. they don't have the championships. They're the Cowboys. Right. right. That's good. Yeah, that's good analysis. Though. It's a good mm-hmm. analogy. 100 mil, though. I wasn't going to bring it up because I know you guys don't give a shit. Until oh, I saw I, 100, I'm, I'm in, until I saw 100 mil a year, I was like, dude. In the I'll tell you what's world that's crazy. No, I, I'm glad you brought it up because I'll tell you something right now. And I, I, I know that having Chuck Denton on the show earlier today, who's you know he's a cameraman. You usually interview the lead broadcaster, the analyst. You don't interview the camera guy, but he's interesting. He's super interesting. And um, this morning at about I'm telling you, it's like six something in the morning, Louis Escobedo, who you guys know, mm-hmm. Louis sent me a text this morning. He's like, dude, please tell me you're having Chuck on today because he heard this all play out yesterday or maybe he was listening to the podcast this morning. He's like, please tell me you're having Chuck on today. I go, yeah, we are having Chuck on. He goes, dude, he, he's an interesting guy because he'd heard him on the show before. Mm-hmm. And I said to Louie, I go, dude, you're going to see, man, when the Super Bowl ends, we're going to start talking about things outside of sports because I know you guys are interested in stuff that's outside of sports. It's still going to be interesting primarily to dudes, but even to the girls that listen, um, it's going to be interesting to you guys too. I've got a list going of people that I want to start incorporating into the show. Summer health. Some are medicine, some are finances, um, some are mm, like borderline political stuff. I'm not getting into politics. I'm not, especially on an election year. I'm not having that. Yeah, but, you better, you better cross that person out. No, but it's, it, but I'm just saying that they're, that it's, it, that's their world, so to speak. You know, I, I, I want us to like learn more shit. You know, Kevin Keats. Kevin Keats. Ain't that his name? Guy in Kansas City. Yeah, he got a he got a political podcast. Um, yeah, I wasn't really thinking. I'll, I'll add him to the list. That's actually a good. Oh idea. no, I was it, just making a guess. I thought that was him. Yeah, no, no, no. It was my boy Sid Rosenberg. You know, and it's not, and it's mostly oh, because. Shit. Oh shit! What? Yeah, actor now, man. Don't be talking. About, he he, he an is actor. an actor, and by the way, activist, man. My man's been in Israel for the last like week, doing radio broadcasts from Israel. Uh, I'm super proud of him. You know, I'm yeah, actually very jealous. Him. Yeah, I'm actually super jealous of the whole thing. Well, um, you should move to New York. No, I don't need to move to New York to go broadcast in Israel if I want to. I mean, I could do that. I could. You know, what time would you have to wake up here to do that? I don't know. I don't know what time it is in Tel Aviv. What time? It's got to be change. like. By the way, I just mentioned late. I just mentioned Louis Escobedo, and the dude sends me a text. Apollo Creed died. Like, yeah, we we know. Uh, right now it would be 10, 12 p.m. So you'd start the show at like 7.30 Tel Aviv time. Yeah. Oh. Anybody want anybody want to go to Israel? All right now. Are, they, are the Bears playing there? Not right now. <laughs> the Bears playing. <laughs> yeah, the Jerusalem Bears. They play little league <laughs> baseball, Jack. No, I don't. No, that's too far to go for some for some little league. Mm-mm. All right. All right, listen, we got to go. Uh everybody have a great weekend. If See it y'all rains, on Tuesday. Yeah, if it rains like a month, well, you guys are here on Monday. Yeah, so me and Brown are, are on Monday. Alex is going to uh Vegas on Monday you're going to check in from radio row. I'm sure of that. I, Cause I'm mm-hmm. going to be curious to see what's going on. As of today, I have no FOMO. I have Jomo, the joy of missing out, but next yeah. week I might have FOMO. I don't Ooh. know. What? Isn't the Kobe thing next week? Yeah. It's next Thursday. Yeah. Next week. Jared it's- Vanderbilt out, out weeks. Oh yeah. Maybe even longer. Dude, the Lakers are so much fun to be. I love the fact that there's so much drama. I love that. I love that. All right, we got to go. We're out of here. Have a great weekend, everybody. So much love. Support our sponsors. Visit our website, kaplanandcrew.com. Buy merch, vote on polls, and we are back on Monday. Peace out, everybody.